Hello everyone, welcome to another video of TCG Talk. I hope you all are having a great day. And today we are gonna be getting into another deck tech video uh, that I wanted to do because lately I've been doing a lot of deck techs, a lot of good good um, decks that I felt were really useful for the game for like a highly competitive level. But one thing I've noticed with my videos and with a lot of other flesh and blood creators, even very notable ones, is a lot of the deck tech videos that you see are like the crindle crumb of decks, right? And that's amazing because you can see what you know, highly competitive players are thinking and, and how they want to do their decks. But for new players and even intermediate players, it's not always ideal to watch those videos um, as if you're trying to build your own deck because a lot of the equipment and a lot of the majestics and the legendaries and stuff like that that you see in those decks cost so much money. I mean, even the, the uh, I'll even tell myself, even the um, Viscerai deck, deck that I just put up, you can go t check it out. I... The legendary boots, the spellbound creepers that just came out, those are running like a hundred and thirty to a hundred and fifty dollars, paying on the day you look right now, and that's just one card out of a sixty card deck with equipment, right? And so some people don't have the money to spend on that. So what I wanted to do is, I want to make a couple of videos and give you decks with just commons and rares uh, that are not going to cost you that much money, that are you know still very competitive decks and i'm gonna do it in the blitz deck format because essentially all you have to do if you want to make it a classic instructor deck is just add on the um third card for each of these because blitz decks you only can have two of each color um so you know this deck right here that i'm going to show you for briar only would cost right now as i looked at it today 15 dollars to make on um tcg player so if you just net deck this you put it on tcg player put it in your cart it's going to cost you 15 bucks and i can promise you this briar deck is going to be competitive at your local game store in blitz um obviously if someone has all the bells and whistles it'll be an uphill battle a little bit but like for like normal decks going against normal decks um this is a really good deck for 15 dollars, and you, then you can upgrade as you want i'm gonna do a couple of uh, videos like this to give new players and like new to intermediate players just somewhere to start that actually makes sense instead of giving you these four five six seven hundred dollar uh deck lists that Honestly, most people aren't going to be able to afford or get lucky and pull. So as we get right into it for Briar, in case anyone's not aware, she has two abilities. If you play two non-attack actions in a turn, you create an embodiment of lightning token, which gives your next attack go again. Um, and you can make multiple of these tokens. And then if she deals any source of damage with an attack action card, um, it creates an embodiment of earth token. An embodiment of earth token gives all your defenses on your next turn from non-attack actions plus one. So if you make an environment verf token and then you block with electrify on the next turn, it goes from two defense to three. So it's very useful. We're going to use her weapon Rosetta Thorn that attacks for two. And then if you've played an attack and an attack action turn this turn, it attacks for two arcane as well. So it's really annoying to block. Most people don't want to block only two physical and then only, and then maybe pitch to block one of the arcane. So most time, a lot of times this damage is going to get through. So it's good for chip damage. When it comes to the equipment, again, we're using base level equipment. Um, probably the most high class one here is the Crown Dichotomy from Arcane Rising. Um, it is a common. Uh, it allows you to put a target rune blade attack action card or action card and non-attack action card uh, back from your graveyard into your deck in any order. Um, and it's got Arcane Barrier 1. So it's really good to put good cards back into your deck if you want to use it. Uh, you also could use any other generic equipment, but I like this just to, you know, especially in Blitz when you only have 40 cards, you want to put two cards back into your deck. It's really useful. Heart and Cross Strap, probably the most tried and true common equipment there is from Welcome to Wraith. Um, it get, basically gives you two resources. Really useful if you're trying to set up a big turn. A lot of these cards are only zero and one cost. They actually all are either zero or one cost. So Heart and Cross Strap is basically going to allow you to play two cards for f two one cost cards for free or a one cost card for free. Maybe if you're trying to set up something um, but this, this is a really good one to use. Uh, again, you also could trade this out for like a null rune, uh, uh, robe. If you're trying to block a little bit of arcane, maybe you're playing against a chain or a viscerai and you just want, you know, that extra arcane barrier. Uh, you could do that as well. Market lightning is really good to help create extra earth and environment tokens. And then snapdragon scalers is good to give your attacks go again, which the point of this deck is to go wide and have a lot of different attacks. So snapdragon scalers is honestly probably the most important, uh, equipment in this deck and all these are commons um and they're good it doesn't block for anything so that's the only downside to the equipment that i chose but i'm trying to enable my offense more than my defense on this but you could honestly swap these out with some of the iron hide uh stuff uh that blocks for one or blocks for two 
Um, if you're going to do it anywhere, I probably would do it in the arm section or the chest. I like keeping these head and leg sections, but those two work as well. So getting into the deck again, the point of this deck is to go wide, um, attack with as much as we can, create an embodiment of earth tokens, and then also trying to play a lot of non-attack actions so we can create embodiment of lightning tokens and give our attacks go again. We're also trying to use a fuse mechanic that Tales of Aria set came out with in order to give these attacks even make them even stronger. So I can't crackle zero cost uh, deals three physical one arcane. You obviously want to get to that that four break point, right? But um, it's really good because it's zero cost and it offends for three. Arcanic Shockwave at red, it hits for four. And if you fuse it, it deals an additional one arcane. Um, and then blue, we're using the blue mainly for pitch and block, but we can use this if we need to, um, especially if they're at a low left, uh, life threshold. Ball Lightning, one of the best uh, cards to enable for us in the set. Basically, it's a zero cost attack that hits for three, but anything that deals damage in that combat chain uh, from then on out, including Ball Lightning, deals that much plus one. So if they don't block ball lightning, it's actually going to deal four damage. And then if you play an arcanic shockwave afterwards for four, and let's say they block three of it, um, instead of only dealing one damage, it's going to deal two damage. So it, it it buffs one damage to all your attacks if they don't block it all the way out. Um, Electrify is good. I like it when you play it from Arsenal, it lets you draw a card, which is really useful in this type of deck. Um, and then if you deal damage at all during that turn physically, like if it hit, any of your cards hit, then it deals an additional three damage on top of them. So somewhat, especially a blitz, it forces your opponent to block out. You know, blitz, you have to be a little bit more proactive with how you block. You can't just take damage like you can in classic instructed. So Electrify is really good to put pressure on your opponent. You know, maybe you attack with an Arcanic Shockwave for four. You know, in a normal game, they might just block you for three um, and only take one damage. But with Electrify on the field, they're going to take four damage, which in blitz is almost a quarter of your life. Uh, so because you only start with 20 health. So it's really good for that. And Twine Lightning, I'm going to use this uh, for its Fuse capability. It gets Go Again. Also, if I already have an Embodiment of Lightning token, it'll just get Go Again by itself. Or if you use a card like Flash, which the next action card you play this turn with costs is zero or greater, which is all our cards, gains Go Again. Um, so if you play this before an Entwine Lightning, it would get Go Again. Or play this before any cards in our deck, it'll get the next card will get Go Again. Right, it's lightning is really good to deal more arcane damage. Uh, if you fuse it, it deals one arcane, and then if that arcane gets through, or if it deals arcane anyway, it will gain go again. Heaven's Claws is really good because it's a one cost for five at red and a one cost for four at yellow. So you can use it for fuse. You can use the yellow for pitch if you have to, but also both of them meet that break point of four attack. Uh, lightning Surge is really good. If you play from Arsenal against go again, it's a zero cost for four. Really good. Sigil of Suffering I'm using for defense. It deals one arcane. If they don't block it, it goes up one in defense. So if they don't block the arcane, which most of the time they don't want to on offense, um, it's going to block for four while dealing one damage to them. Sending Steel Blade for uh, one cost for four with one arcane. So it's technically a one cost for five. Vexing Malice is the one that you could take out. It's a one cost for three with two arcane. So the extra arcane is good. But it's really easy to block. So basically, you're doing you're you're spending one resource to deal two arcane damage, which is a little crappy. Um, it's really good late game because it forces the opponent to do something, but it's a little bit annoying in some cases. Um, then we have Weave Lightning. This is like your utility card. At red, it'll give your attacks plus three if it's fused. They get go again. At blue, it only gives them plus one, but the blue blocks for two, and it uh um can pitch really well. And then Veil of Flash is our last elemental rune blade card. Um, it's if it's fused, you can play your next non-attack as though we're an instant, which is really useful, right? Let's say you play Veil of Flash and it doesn't have go again. Um, but it's fused. If it's fused, then you play a card like Flash, that's a non-attack action. You play a card like Electrify that has go again on the on the card, and then you gain your action point back. Because now you just played a instant speed non-attack action with go again, which lets you continue to to play your turn out. So it's really useful for that. And then the one non Tales of Aria card I have in here um, is Meet and Greet. Uh, I like Meet and Greet because if it hits, it creates a Rune Chant token. It's the only card in a set that creates the Rune Chant token, but we're not using it just mainly for that. We're doing it because if you've dealt Arcane damage this turn, Meet and Greet gains go again. And at red, it hits for four. It blocks for three overall. And at blue, it's good for pitch. So it's good to try to get that go again effect. It's good to maybe create a Rune Chant, um, which is kind of random, but hey, it's that one extra instance of Arcane. Um, 
So this is the, the deck as a whole. We're, we're really offensive minded. We're trying to go wide. Um, if you've noticed, I put I didn't put Amulet Lightning in here. I didn't put Lightning Press in here. I didn't put any instant speed stuff in here because I want to be able to block with everything in my deck. The only thing it can't really block is, is Ball Lightning, but all my non-attack actions can block, and it, that's good for when I create those environment Earth tokens and I want to block. Um, I have, what, four, um, six, eight, eight out of 40 of my cards and honestly you could put a couple more on attack actions in here if you wanted to um, i'm just trying to be really aggressive uh but eight of those non-attack actions all get buffs from their blocks and then all your attack cards already block for three so that's good um so this is a good budget deck it's 15 dollars on tcg player if you want to use it um and it'll help new players get a little bit you know more into the game feel a little bit more competitive without spending a crap ton of money this is also very useful if you're trying to buy this for a friend or as a gift or for a kid or something like that you can get them this deck for really cheap and they'll feel like they actually have a good deck right instead of just you know trying to spend a ton of money on a deck that you may not even like um and then going from there so i hope you all enjoy this video it's a little bit different of a pace for a deck tech um you know it may not be useful for you but if you know a new player this might be a good video to show them um if you enjoy it or you think it's useful please leave a like comment subscribe on it. if you don't think it's useful leave a comment let me know um I, it really helps out the channel really appreciate the feedback honestly uh if you don't do it for me do it for somebody else go to another flesh and blood creator watch their videos leave them a like and comment and subscribe on their stuff and hopefully they can um you know grow as well because i want more people to know this game and, and learn it and that's why i'm doing videos like this because i want new players and intermediate players to be able to be successful at the game and feel like they're actually progressing without having to empty their bank account in order to do it. Um, but I hope you all enjoyed this video and I will see you all next time on TCG talk. Thank you all so much. Have a great day.